And, and our next speaker will be joining us online uh, today, Stephanie Weitkamp-Peters. Um, she is the chair of German Bioimaging, and she's going to talk to us about imaging data infrastructure. Hopefully everything is ready there technically, so Stephanie, go ahead, please. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. Um, okay, so I think my talk will be somehow complementary to what uh, Jason was talking about. I hope so. So that's the idea. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, yeah, for, for um, building up this hybrid format of, of ELMI. That's really great because otherwise I could not have participated and it's really very nice. Of course, I would have loved to be there in person. However, to uh, deliver my talk online is, is better than just nothing. So I'm going to talk about a little bit on building information infrastructures. So a little bit more on the basic things that have to happen um, to make all the other things that uh, Jason was reporting on um, are available for everybody. So I'm the head of the Center for Advanced Imaging at Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf. And at the same time, I'm the chair of German Bioimaging. And um, yeah, the whole German crowd, I think, is, is really very actively um, taking part in this um, international bioimaging community. And I think the best representative is still the OME consortium. That's why I also put this logo on here to show that we are part of the international community. However, I'm going to talk a little bit on, on the German things that are happening at the moment. So um, why do we need all these kind of information infrastructures? Because we need it to establish the fair bioimage workflow. And as Jason told you, it should be as seamless as possible. However, there are still a few to do's on our list and I will just pick a few of them to when we run through this workflow here. And um, it's first of all, when you think of image acquisition and then storage, that's the best time point to do metadata annotations. We discussed it already on Tuesday a lot. And for this, we would need really user-friendly tools. It's again, the, the um, keyword uh, seamlessly best. Um, should not be painful to do all these jobs. And there are still, there are already some tools available like, like the MDMIC, the Micrometer app or the Method J2. However, all these tools need to be improved and to be integrated and so on and so forth. And of course, we need to agree on these sets of metadata. Um, maybe it's a minimal metadata set or it's the comprehensive set of metadata. A lot of sorry. these things have to be discussed in, in each Stephanie, individual sorry. domain. Do you, do you hear me? Of the biological fields and so on. So that's a lot of <laughs> communication. I guess. Stephanie, do you, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, we don't see any slides from you. Ah, that's, oh, that's bad, bad because I can you try screen sharing? Yeah. I think we have yeah. the backup here, but okay. So that's I share my screen with you. So Zoom is yeah. Yes. Okay. Now yeah. we see. Now now you it see. works. Yes. It thank works. you. Okay. <laughs> so. But I will not start again, I think. So I hope you could follow until now. So that's the, the workflow I was talking about here. And we have a lot of things on our to-do list yeah, to, make this, um, to make this work in every core facility in any of the research labs. And um, yeah, that was about the acquisition, the metadata annotation that takes place in this area here. And of course, maybe now it's good that you see the screen we need to integrate all of this into the local IT infrastructure. For example, if you want to establish your local Omero instance, you have to talk to the people from the IT department and they need to open the firewalls and the networks things. And then you have the local, local authentication things and everything. And um, yeah, that's a, a lot of little steps to, to get these uh, things working. And for example, if we talk about Omero, and there was a discussion already on Tuesday about Omero and iWords, you might um, need to integrate your image database with other data management systems. And of course, when we talk about data, you need ways to import and export also the data. 
and you need somebody to operate the system permanently. Um, when it comes to, to analysis, okay, now it's working. Um, you need a lot of guidance and training for, for uh, um, the researchers. And of course you want um, to, to use all the new tools that have been introduced in the morning session, for example, all the AI based methods and so on. And they might be only available in, in, in a cloud or in a desktop as a service system. So it, it won't be available in any uh, core facility or any research lab. So it would be good to, to make those things available online. And um, next thing, of course, if, if we want to have all these reference data in IDR, we need best practice for submission to the repositories. And again, I also need to mention that we need better data file formats and we have the idea. And of course, again, Josh is, is uh, the master behind, mastermind behind this, this uh, the fair image objects is one idea how we could go on. And yeah, it's not only that we need the infrastructures, but uh, we want the people to use all these uh, fantastic tools. And for this, we need a lot of training and education. We need to show the be benefits of this. Otherwise, it's just another effort to, to work with your data and there's no benefit. And for this, we really need to, to collect and tell all the success stories um, that are there when we share our data. And of course, um, there's a strong need for international networking and alignment within the community that we do not um, yeah, have too many parallel um, developments, same solution or different solutions for the same problems and so on and so forth. So um, now let's, let's look into this workflow and find the entry point of this. So where's the entry point of the bioimage workflow? Technically, of course, it's here, it's a researcher sitting behind a microscope and this person is acquiring images and it will most, um, in most cases happen at your local institution. So however, if you think intellectually and that um, was also mentioned by, by Jason already, uh, you could think of before you start acquiring your own images, you could think of entering the workflow on that side here that you evaluate existing images and yet that you really think of and consider for your research going to IDR or maybe also to local databases to, to show what the colleagues are sharing with you to bioimage archive or empire or whatever. So this is maybe also a shift in of your mind that people start to considering really working with all these resources we are now building up. Okay, so then when we go to a typical imaging core facility, um, like in our place in Düsseldorf, um, we, we need to check what is the status quo now. So at the moment you go to, the, to your imaging system and then you acquire the images in our place, um, then you need to um, transfer the images to, to a central file store. However, if you only do this step, which is mandatory, then the data is safe, but it's not really available. It's not searchable because as also reported by Jason, you have this proprietary file formats and you cannot really work with your data because imaging data is so complex. You, you, you just don't get very easy your, your um, um, preview of the images. And for example, you will not be able as a student to share it easily with your PI. For example, PI has a MacBook and then you, you cannot install the proprietary software and then whatever will happen. So what is needed? Yeah, and then about the metadata, of course, very important, where's the metadata? So now the worst case scenario is like this, there's the metadata. Okay, usually, hopefully, they will end up in a hardcover lab notebook. In some places, there um, people are using already the electronic lab notebooks. It's increasing also in our university that people are using it. Yeah, but it's of course not the best way. Would be better to have the metadata with the images. So it would be of course very beneficial to make the image data better, better accessible. That's what we are offering in our place. We need an image database and we have fun. And of course we are running our own um, local Omero instance. And now 
it's it's getting better because now we have a preview available data is findable is shareable with your pi or colleagues or whatever and metadata is interoperable so now it would be the perfect time point to annotate the metadata because now you have all information available about the experiment your personal impression and you could describe everything however for this you would need all the kind of annotation tools as I said, a few are already available, but still need to be improved that it is yeah, usable with, on a daily routine. Um, okay, let's have a look to, to Omero and all these databases and especially image databases. So that is one result of our survey we did last year in summer, the NFTI for Bioimage Community Survey. And thank you again to everybody who took part in this in the survey and we, we could find out that people really don't know all these kind of, of databases and especially image databases. Among them, at least Omero is the best known image database. And they are, when, when we try to, to sum up somehow how many uh, bioimage da um, bioimaging data are under management, yeah, it's, it seems to be only 25%. So there's a lot of room for improvement. So the results of the survey will be very soon published in F1000 research and it's still under revision, but it will be available very, very soon, maybe next week or so. Okay, so usage of all this image databases or databases at, at all, it seems we have to improve this also. So, and here again, we have the technical side. So we need to teach how people should use this infrastructure. So we do this, for example, when we give introduction to microscope, we also give introduction to Omero and how people should upload and so on. And of course, we need to, to um, teach and educate the people why they should do it. Um, latest at that point, when it comes to training and all these educational tools, it is absolutely clear that you really need for example, if you run a core facility, extra capacity, capacities to do that, yeah. And um, that's why we in, in Germany decided, um, myself and Susanne, Roland Ichke, Elisa May, and um, supported by Karen Bernhard, um, to write a proposal, yeah, to acquire funding for, for doing all these tasks. And um, we have been lucky, so we received funding and that's, uh, now the ICD bio project started that um, started in the beginning of this year. It's about information infrastructure for bioimage data. And now we got funding for uh, four people for three years now, and that's now our extra capacity we have. So for people, Tom is working with me in Düsseldorf and he is in person in Turku, so you can meet him there. And there's Julia, in Osnabrück with Susanne, Tobias in Freiburg and Christian working with Elisa in um, Heidelberg. And we, there's a website online and yeah, you just can have a look there. And we just started, but we will fill this website with all the results of the project, of course, and we will of course be yeah, available via the website. You can contact us if you have questions and yeah, just have a look if you're interested. And that brings me to the work program of I3D Bio. And that's now touching on the points I mentioned um, in the beginning. How can we establish this seamless workflow for bioimaging data? We need to provide tools and standards. And of course, we are interested in collecting this kind, all kinds of use cases and also what are the needs of the community. So we have three different work packages. The one in Düsseldorf is the deployment workshop, deployment work program, work package. And there we try to establish standard procedures for this kind of Omero installations. As I told you, to, to make it easier to um, um, communicate with your IT department, for example. There are very similar uh, steps in, in establishing or in installing this um, Omero instance. And we hope we can um, help a little bit in different places that we come up with, a, yeah, with standard procedures for doing it. Then of course we will take care of um, metadata standards, provide workflows for deposition of the bioimage data to the repositories, 
And as a very good example, how um, we can make use of sharing data in an image database, Oland and uh, Tobias will set up a metrology database. And that, of course, will happen in close collaboration with the cry um people. The second um, work package will take um, care of the technical infrastructure. That's Susanne's part. It's about storage concepts for bioimage data. And that's touching on what uh, also Jason mentioned about yeah, cloud and whatever uh, tools are available. It's again improving adaptation for bioimage metadata tools um, to improve this. And that's about integration of the experimental metadata. And that's mainly about, um, for example, um, co connecting Omero with electronic lab notebooks. And of course, a big package about communication and training. Uh, being in contact with the international bioimaging community and so on and so forth. However, this is not enough. That's really concentrating, focusing on Omero. It's focusing on the local needs. It's a little bit, of course, focusing on, on the German crowd, on the people, the core facilities here in Germany. Um, it's, it's only a few aspects we can touch with this project. And that's why we decided to um, write even a, a bigger proposal at the NFDI for bioimage because there was an opportunity in Germany, uh, the Germany's, Germany's National Research Data Infrastructure Initiative, the NFDI. And here we handed in a big proposal for um, a National Research Data Infrastructure Consortium for bioimage data, the NFDI for bioimage. And together with those awesome team here of people, we um, described six different task areas where we think we, it's really necessary to, to um, build something up to establish this kind of, of infrastructures. And of course, it's, it will happen in Germany, but of course, uh, within the international uh, framework. And it's, um, yeah, the, the point is the funding decision is pending. So the ME rating is just one week too early. So on next Monday, we will know um, if we get at least um, a recommendation for funding. But I still, I, I cannot tell you what will happen. However, even if we don't get the funding, still all the things we described in the proposal have to happen. And then we just have to see what kind of other funding we could get to, to make it work. So there are six different task areas, and I would like to share with you the graphical abstracts of, of each of those task areas, because they are really describing what has to happen to really come up with the complete uh, workflow for, for image data and what, how should the information infrastructure for image data look like. So it's, um, yeah, task area one about image data, metadata formats and standardization. It's uh, the idea is to come up with something that is what is called the fair image object, which has unique identifier, which, which comes with a, with a file format that's compatible with, with cloud storage, uh, which um, includes standards for metadata, and which is also including yeah, multi-dimensional data. If you think of, of FLIM or all these things, you don't have only the intensity, you will have lifetime information and so on and so forth. That's the task area, of course, of, of Josh and Susanne, and I'm only for formal reasons on that task area. And yeah, let's see what will happen. And that's very close, of course, to the development of a new next generation file for also described by, by Jason. The next task area is the technical one. And it's about, yeah, cloud resources, also described by, by Jason. So, and that will be a playground where we will try out different things, yeah. And the idea is that in the end, uh, we will can, can up with, can come up with solutions for federated infrastructure for bioimage data. And that will happen mainly in, in Münster in Germany and Freiburg and will be led by Markus Bank-Burian and uh, Björn Brüning, who is also part of the, the Galaxy team very important. And here we, we will try to make, for example, yeah, analysis tools available in the cloud and, and uh, via the desktop as a service model and so on and so forth. Let's see. Um, and then next part, and that's now a little bit touching on, on what Jason introduced to you, I think with the Delta Tissue Project, it's about 
um, multimodal data linking and integration because it's not only the imaging data. Of course, we are only looking on imaging data, but there's a lot of different other data types around. And of course, it would be great to link all these this, um, different data types. And that will happen in task area three. And um, that will be led by Jan Philipp Malm and Bernhard Zuschratter. And um, yeah, they will come up with a searchable multimodal graph, graph database. And I think for, for this special type of, of data linking and so on, we will really need another layer of education to, um, yeah, to make people think of this, all the possibilities we have when we can offer this kind of, of data linking. And then there will be another task area and that's about bioimage informatics and analysis, analysis led by Anna, you heard her in the morning, and Tilo Figge. And here we try to improve the accessibility and of course the reproducibility of analysis workflows. And that should be combined then with the original data and this package will be then available, um, also shareable as a, as a complete fair data set. And Last but not least, task area five is about training and the community integration. So all the tools, all the workflows, all the scenarios um, will be of course shared with the community and we will get hopefully a lot of feedback when doing that. And here the idea is really to capacitate the researchers for fair image data management. And of course there will be another task area for um, governance of all these structures and yeah, networking and so on. Okay, that's the idea. As I said, when we don't get the funding, still the things have to be done and then we need to see how we how we manage. But this is the, the big idea, what needs to be established in the future, yeah, to make all the tools available and to make uh, yeah, image image data fair in the very end. So that's how then the NFDI for bioimage network should look like in Germany and beyond. Of course, we will connect in all directions. It's that we have these co-applicant institutions with IT infrastructure, as I said, in Münster and in Freiburg. Um, we have um, many participating institutions. We have community use cases. And of course, there will be a web portal, portal, online presence of the NFDI for bioimage, but most important, Again, we will have, if we get the funding, extra capacities, and that's the people here, data stewards and res research software engineers and all these people should support the community, do the training, do education, collect feedback, and develop tools and work on, on all the different things I presented to you. So then that brings me to a very short summary and take home. So, Information infrastructure are needed to establish the fair image bioimage workflow, as I said in the beginning. And um, there's a big challenge because we have to establish the local infrastructures in parallel with, I would call it higher order infrastructures. So however, if possible, we should try to, isol um, to avoid isolated solutions. So that needs really a constant exchange between all the different stakeholders. Anybody who, who wants to, to improve the situation and work on that would need extra capacity. So one should really try to acquire some funding or whatever for all these people who, who have to do the work. And um, what we need to do uh, to, to make people use all these kind of tools is really to use all the mechanisms that are available to motivate researchers for RDM, for research data management, and that's training education, and uh, that was very nicely mentioned by, by Kurt Anderson, some pressure, so the publishers and funders should be involved, and that really helps a lot. We, we see that every day. And my personal recommendation is to really start very early, start with the students, introduce Omero to them, and they will never stop using it. With that, I would like to come to the end and acknowledge all the really brilliant people working in Düsseldorf and within the different projects here and the international collaborators on that side. And that's really um, activity and efforts of, of many, many people. And with that, I'd like to thank you and stop here. Thank you.
Thanks a lot, Stephanie, for that. And luckily, we saw your slides also at the end. Yeah. Very, very, impre very nice with the grant also that you got. We maybe have time for one very quick question. Would we have something very quick over here? Right, yes. Hello, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Uh, I have a, a question. Uh, what would you recommend a core facility who has a limited, let's say, one-to-work station and would like to scale up and would like to start making a uh, proper infrastructure? What would you say? Is there anything, any help we can get I from you in uh, uh, designing the infrastructure or, yeah? Yeah, so the idea is, of course, that, um, as I said, we will be available via our website, and then, and that's what we did already. Um, if you think of, of building up this kind of infrastructure, yeah, get in, in touch with us, and then we, we can discuss what are the, um, the um, prerequisites in your place, so what does the IT department need, um, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really the idea of the project, that we get in touch and that you get support from us um, for establishing this. Okay, thanks a lot. And, and thank you very much again, Stephanie, for joining us online. Thank you.